Hello, everyone. <laughs> hey, hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of From the District with Senator Suzanne Weber. Senator, good to be with you again. We missed a week. I apologize. Yes. But my sister told me this morning that she had just watched the last one that we had done. Oh, and good. she lives in northern Minnesota. So somebody's oh. watching over us. <laughs> I'm glad somebody watches these. Although, you know, we'd probably still do these even if they didn't because I enjoy our conversations. Well, we have some really good conversations about some really important things. And uh, I think it's a good opportunity for us. It is. It is. And it's, um, we try, like I said, we try to do these every week. Um, doesn't happen every time, but we, we, we're usually pretty good at it. And um, we've been really trying to do these every week during the session. I think after the session is over here in a couple of months, we'll get maybe moved towards uh, maybe the once a month or so. Once a month, I think. Yeah, something like that. But yeah. I, but right now, there's just so much going on. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think it's important to have these conversations weekly. So how was your week last week? What, what You had meetings? You get to, get to chat with people? What, what was going on? Um, Just a second. I already got people talking at you. I have. Martin, get over here. <laughs> get up here. You don't need to do that kind of thing. Uh -oh. Yeah. See what happens when you when you take the senator off? You get yelled at. He's never actually been really yelled at. No, no, I can't imagine. Uh, there um, he is. I see him. You can see him Martin in the background. <laughs> little pill. Anyway, uh, I I had some really good meetings with people. Um, I had meetings with people from the governor's office mm -hmm. uh, concerning some uh, education issues. I had a really good group from Gresham coming in and talking about what they're doing um, with um, the homeless and um, kids that are having problems and rehabilitation for people on drugs and um, drug and alcohol counselors and providing activities for kids at times when they're probably out there getting in trouble. Mm. But basically, peer support as being something that is really important. Um, I had, um, interestingly enough, I had both sides of the coin on uh, the uh, tobacco issue that's going to be coming for a vote. Right. So there's a bill on the bill in the legislature that would ban the sale of flavored tobacco. Yes. Um, so that uh, is a uh, a popular product amongst some uh, on one side you'll hear that it's a popular product for those who uh, can legally use it the other side is going to say that it is a uh, an attraction to young people to have something uh, flavored so that it tastes good because if you're just you know chewing or smoking um, non-flavored yes. tobacco it's a little less pleasant unless you've acquired a taste yes however there you know there you got to think about this in the way that someone who has a nicotine um, habit. Right. And if this is an important delivery system of nicotine, it, they are going to find a way, even if it's illegal. Now, there's a lot of taxes that are uh, imposed on these products, and the state depends heavily on those taxes. Now, one person told me that there's a possibility that it was it could be ninety million dollars in a biennium that the state would lose by doing this, because. But on the other hand, um, California, Nevada, Idaho, and Washington would be benefiting because people would be getting their products from them there. And the other thing is, they may also be getting their products um, in the mail. And so we may be moving a lot of that product through the mail to be able to satisfy people's habits. Right. And uh, so, you know, I don't know. Um, I'm weighing um, the situation both ways because, you know, in, in one respect, it's also impacting small businesses. Right. So how is, you know, how are we going to do that? And there is a provision in the bill that would delay the implementation of it so that uh, tobacco shops could uh, divest themselves 
of their inventory. Well, <laughs> divesting themselves of their inventory, but they're also divesting themselves of their profits. Right, right. It does seem like um, you see where they're trying to get to, but I, I do. it's not easy. It's not a no. simple thing. It's not a simple not solution. A simple. No, there is no uh, simple solution to this. And you've gotten quite a number of emails and calls about this uh, and meetings, as you mentioned, yeah. on both sides of this. And um, it's, you're definitely and, giving a lot of thought. And you know, the, the thing that they always say about data and information, you can find data to prove any point that you want to point. Right. You know, prove. Uh, it's there. Both sides of the coin are are adequately represented as far as data to support uh, their point. Right. Well, that yeah, that's definitely an interesting, and I'm not surprised you're getting a lot of folks coming over to talk to you about that. What else? Who else has come to talk to you? Oh my any goodness! Fun, any, or any fun meetings? Anything? Did you get to go to any receptions or anything like that? The fun um, being you know, being a senator. <laughs> I did get to go to Coastal Caucus meeting, which is fun because you get to meet with the, just the reps and the senators from the coast and talk about pertinent things. Um, I did not um, go to any um, receptions this week because of other meetings that I had during the same time. And so I didn't get to do fun this week. Well, I don't um, know. Coastal Caucus can be fun. I would say it is... Uh, not a caucus in a formal no. sense, perhaps, because gener uh, there has not been one of those that I have attended that numerous swear words aren't dropped within the first five minutes. I mean, it's um, the it's it's very a from the professionalism side, which uh, it's actually it let, let, lets people let their guard down and be a little bit right. more um, and genuine. We, we're talking now about having a, a reception for um, the folks in the Capitol in June, which would be fun. Uh, and we're also talking about an economic summit for the coast that we would also sponsor. And, you know, we're talking about when and how, and you know, in the past, the Coastal Caucus has done that at uh, um, the casinos. Right. And so, you know, we're just started to, uh, started the conversations about what it would look like and when it would be. Um, but they were very important when the Coastal Caucus did them in the past. And we feel it's something that ought to uh, start again. Yeah, they were they were definitely the thing to be at mm -hmm. uh, in terms of public policy on the coast. Um, yeah. Got people from North Coast, South Coast, Central Coast, brought up all together of all parties too. All it was really popular amongst um, city leaders and county leaders who are all nonpartisan. Right. Well, the county, some I think some of the county commissioners in the southern end are partisan, um, but it was really, um, really impressive. Quite honestly, yes, it got done at those things, and I think uh, quite honestly it was. It was one of those things where a lot of the work happened in, in the hallway, right? You, had, yes. you, you saw each other, and you, you, hey, let's go talk, go over here and talk about that. The the, the programs and the forums and, and the the panels were great; they were interesting, but the work really got done in the hallway. Right, it really did. Yeah, that networking was extremely important. Plus, you got to also experience and enjoy all of the products right. from the coast. Because everybody came, you know, you bring and brag, show and tell, you know, what kind of food are you serving now? What are you, what have you got out there? What are you producing? Right. Um, and so it was that kind of an atmosphere also. Right. Well, you did get some, um, some distressing news. I got, right. I got, oh, actually the distressing news this week was just, I just felt so bad. We'll start with toilet paper, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah I, I forgot about that. That was the beginning of the week. Yes. We have two mills closing, one in Scappoose and one in St. Helens that produce toilet paper. I will tell you, it has been the only parade I have ever been to in my life where they threw more toilet paper than candy. 
my son drove me in the St. Helens parade and there was toilet paper all over the place. He laughed through the whole parade. He just could not get over it. Um, <laughs> so this is Cascade, then, Incorpor this Cascade is, Incorporated. Yes, this is a hundred families at least that are going to be impacted by the loss of a job. And you know, there's that, uh, the residual that goes along with it. Um, there's the plumbers and the electricians at the grocery stores and the clothing stores. You know, the Fred Meyer's gonna be impacted by this as is the Safeway and the, the corner grocery store. Um, all of those things are going to be impacted. Yeah. Now they have said that they are offering, and I don't know what this is, generous severance packages. And they're also um, offering people the ability to transfer to their uh, facilities on the East Coast. Now, how that works out, that's also going to impact us. Uh, because, you know, Oregon has been whining about the fact that they lost, what, 16,000 more people than they gained over the last year. Well, this is another loss right. to, our, to our state. You know, I was just ta I was talking to a, a, a friend um, in another state here this last week, and we were talking about you know, this about the con about uh, congressional districts and and the census from, two from 2020 and the re recalibration of of uh, congressional districts in 2022. Oregon got a new congressional district. Oregon, if it keeps doing what it's doing, is going to end up losing that congressional district in 10 years. Yes. Um, so this is, yeah, this is it's a small number, but as you said, these families are, are facing a stark choice of being unemployed and losing their uh, very well-paying job. This isn't, Those you know, are, $20 no. an hour job. This yeah, is, they are not. you know, this is 40, 50, 60, 000, $60 a job, uh, an hour job. And, or saying, well, we're just going to to keep our job. We're going to pick pick up, and we're going to move to the East Coast. We're going to pick up and move to Canada. That's a that's a terrible decision for one to have to make. But a lot of it has to do with the cost of doing business, right? Of creating business in Oregon, being overwhelming to these um, companies. This company comes out of Canada. Um, they are very env environmental friendly. They have followed all the rules, but the cost of the fuel to operate the plant. Right. Um, and I, I wonder also. I mean, when, when your office reached out, and one of the things that the that the company said that was a, a real big deal breaker was the cost of natural gas. Natural gas. And I wonder how much. I mean, we hear just uh, unfortunately our friends on the extreme side of the left said this beating up on natural gas and it's terrible we got to get rid of it well it's not just how, what heats our ovens right right it's not just what we cook our scrambled eggs on in the morning um if we get rid of natural gas you're going to shut down plants like this and um the, you're going to impact you're going to impact restaurants oh yes uh, heavily. if you're going to be converting the stoves that are cooking all of the food um, from natural gas um, or propane to um, electricity, that's extremely expensive. Yeah. And that is one thing that Oregon restaurant lodging people are, they, they just can't, you can't do it and keep your restaurants in business. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that is definitely a frustration, and that is just that is just so incredibly sad that that's occurring. But unfortunately, that's only the beginning of bad news that we got this week. Right, because then we ended up the week uh, finding out about the Sunset Empire Transportation District uh, having to shut down business because of a lack of funds. Um, and the people that are reliant on that are suffering. You know, they have reservations for over 60 people. And I just talked to the board of directors chair this morning. Over 60 people just for medical appointments and the such for Monday. Yeah. That are, you know, and they've got, they are working very hard to create 
ride shares and ways to um, take care of these people, but it's still uh, over 40 people that are going to be without a job. Right. So just forgive me for this, for kind of a, we, we, we've gotten a lot of calls. Your office has gotten a lot of calls, a lot of emails about this. Um, there's kind of three things that need to happen. One, yeah. you got to write the ship. You got to, got to figure out how we're going to continue. Figure out how to, yes. Yeah. Make this right. Yes. So this is the first thing that needs to That's happen. And I know is. you have reached out to the governor's office. You've reached out to ODA. You've reached out to anybody you can possibly think of to, um, yeah. Ask for help. How how can how can we get things going? The step after that, I think. Pardon me. The step after that is to find out what happened. Um, yes, um, ODOT will be performing an audit on uh, the whole the whole thing uh, because because of how they discovered that they were, you know, short eight hundred thousand dollars. Right. Which you know that yeah that's a it's feat not, in itself it's not yeah. right i mean it's not it's not, right. is, whether it's through incompetence or malevolence we don't know whether we don't know we don't, we don't know anything more than everybody else knows right. reading in the newspaper i mean we just there, there's just so little that anybody knows right now so step one is we're trying really hard to get things back online yes that's step one. We we know about it. We're trying really hard to get things back online. Yes. Um, and I'm hoping that I'll be able to have a meeting with the governor tomorrow, um, Tuesday at the latest. Yeah. Today's uh, setting up. We're recording I'm, this on we're recording this on April 30th, Sunday, the April 30th. So just so everybody knows the time frame. Um, um, so anyway you know, so that she is aware and maybe there is some help she can give us. We're also reaching out to Suzanne Bonamici's office. Um, I believe that the uh, transportation district has already done that, reached out to her in talking with the board chair. Right. And right. the county commissioners are, are extremely concerned about this. And this isn't something that um, an, another um, small district or anyone can actually step in and and take over that rapidly. Uh, there's a lot of steps that have to happen besides figuring out initially what happened. Right. And I think that's the next step. So I think every, what we want to make sure everybody knows that we intend to find out what happened, whether yes. it's assisting an agency, doing an audit, having working to have an external audit done. I, we don't know. But step one is to make sure that we try to get things back online as quickly as possible. And then we'll find out what happened. And then we'll make sure those people who um, whose error this was are held accountable. Well, think about the people that take the bus to work. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And what and is I, that going to do to our employers? I mean, right. that's just it. It's not just somebody. Unfortunately, people are going to are going to miss doctor's appointments, and that's terrible. But when you have a, a large, if you have a factory or 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 a um, or uh, you know a, a fishing yeah. industry or organization or a business or something like that, and you know a half or a, even a quarter of your your staff are using the bus to get to work, and it, you, all of a sudden, you know, you're missing a quarter of your staff. That's yep. that's a that's a big problem. So yes, um that was incredibly unfortunate, I think. Um I agree with you. Really, really. I, I think really what was most unfortunate is the way it came down and how we we, it we, was, we read it out of the newspaper. Sudden. It was so sudden. It was sudden to the board of directors. Right. And I think that's just it. Is uh, I think more shocking than it happening was that it just happened, and they everybody was told today's your last day. Don't come in tomorrow. Yes. Um, One thing they did do was on Friday they did have the the work source people in there to help the employees be able to fill out their forms for their unemployment right. because they weren't about, they weren't able to get their full paychecks at the end even. Because they just didn't have the revenue available. So there's about 50 employees 
right? Around yeah, 50? between 40 and 50, right around in that number. Yeah, so just the direct, all of a sudden you got 50 people right. out of jobs. Not to mention the people who use the, that, that service to get to work now either can't get to work or, I mean, the, the ripple effect is just phenomenal. Right, and, you know, then there's the uncertainty of the ride share. Okay, who are right. you sharing rides with? Right. Are you vetting the people that are taking over some of these things? Yeah, and we don't know. Well, we, don't they know. Are. we don't know any of that right now. Um, but the, your office is working to help right the ship. Yes. Uh, I know the county commissioners are very concerned, and and they have stepped up and said whatever. I know yep. they're, they're going to offer technical assistance in any way they can. Yep. Um, and uh, we'll be working with the governor's office to see if she can offer any help. Um, and then do know, we want everyone to know that people will be held accountable for this. Uh, but step one is to, uh, make this hurt as yeah. few people as possible right yeah. now. Right. Yeah. Last week was rough. It, it was a rough week. Outside of the legislature. I mean, the legislature is rough enough, but I last know. Week, oof. um, I know I, I, have a remonstrance on the on the floor uh, concerning um, the mills. I, right. I was just I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Um, that really hurts communities too. I mean, it's beyond. Yes, it does. You, you I, I remember in in Tillamook when we lost like an entire shift at the mill. I mean, the mill didn't close. Even just losing that shift had a, had a remarkable, remarkable effect. But there are a lot of our little communities along the coast who have had mills shut down. Well, we did have our shutdown at one point in time. What and was we that? Everybody. Um, that was uh, in the 70s, just before Hampton bought it. I was not here. You I, was, not I was a glimmer in my father's eye. Uh huh. Yes, you were. That's all you were. Yes. But you, and I, I will tell you what that did to the whole community uh, was devastating because, right. you know, then they opened it back up and they just hired who they wanted and they didn't rehire everyone that had worked at the mill prior. Right. And uh, there was a, a, it was really sad and it was really um, a time when we didn't know what was going to happen to our economy. You know, we've gotten a couple of emails fairly recently that it, it that have essentially said mills are going to close. Get over it. Like, yes, we no. have, haven't we? No, and we're not going to get over it. <laughs> we're not, not going to get over it. We, uh, no. Yeah, things change. We get that. But when you just say like, the communities need to adjust and get get used to it, like, no, no, they don't. They don't. Well, Industries can shift and change, and that's fine. Yes. But to just say, well, you need to get over it because your mills are going to close and your communities are going to be forever changed. No. That's why we fight. Exactly. And <laughs> people don't realize that timber revenue that comes out of our forests, what exactly it all supports. All of these small districts that we have, Yep. They're all supported by that money. So what are you going to lose? You're going to lose some fire departments. You're going to lose. Uh, Apparently you're going to lose a transportation district. You're going to lose a transportation district. Uh, you're moving backwards at a very rapid pace. Right. On little, little districts that you thought you had depended upon. You can't depend on these things forever if you're going to continually take away the revenue that supports them. Right. And I. It's not just about it's not just about paychecks, big paychecks going to timber barons. That's not what it's all about. That's not what it's if about. That's what it was all about. None of us would care. None of us would care. I would not care. Right. I didn't get into politics to help rich guys. That's right. But those small those school districts, the fire district, the water district, the transportation district. The port district, the library district, our county, all of those guys, our the county, counties, the counties. Look at the schools that are supported by that. 
Right. That's they had a whole, that they had thing on on um, someone was deciding where to put their children in school, where they were going to move, and is it was it going to be this district or that district, and what were the positive of this district or that district and you know the most people weighed in on the fact that the district that was getting timber money had more money to be able to uh, support and educate their children and enhance their curriculum yep and it was timber money that was doing that yep so it just it just really hawks me off and i know it does you too when somebody thinks that we're trying to support mills and timber because we're trying because all we care about is campaign yes. donations from timber companies yes. that is not even, you know, uh, not even on our minds right and we don't care about uh, john hampton was a great man how much money he made did not matter to me at all <laughs> exactly. I, it just blows my mind when people do that but well Let's talk about a little bit about some legislation that's going on. We've talked about Senate Bill 406 a bit, uh, but we've had a new uh, some some new happenings with it. 406 being it's the bill that would allow Tillamook County to come into a program uh, that would allow for more density, more housing to be built, and for some financial assistance for that. And this is a bill just expressly for Tillamook County, right? because of our population numbers the bill that uh that this was based on was for um areas or communities with ten thousand or more people and our density of people is not so that that we could um benefit from that bill so it was only for cities it was only meant to be for cities meant for cities and with population of ten thousand or more well, we don't fit into that, but we needed that. Right. And so that's, we had another hearing on it this week. Right. It went to the House Committee. Um, you testified there, and we had some representatives from uh, county government as well. Uh, happy that um, now that it's in the House, uh, Representative Javity has signed on as a chief sponsor as well. So that's wonderful. So now that it's had its sponsorship, it, or it's had its, um, Hearing, we're just waiting for a vote from the committee uh so hopefully that will come very soon and then it'll go to the house floor yes um, and I, once understand, it, I understand that they've been given the go-ahead to release more uh bills uh from the committees to be able to come to the floor great but hopefully they will will hear that there's going to be a vote i just checked the schedule about 15 minutes ago or right right before we started um, and it was not scheduled for a public hearing or a, a, a work not session. Scheduled yeah. for a work session. Yeah. And, and people ought to know that the public hearing is when you take all of the testimony and the information on it, because we use those words and we think people know. But the work session is where you actually vote it out of committee and onto the floor. Right. So that's not scheduled yet. We're hoping okay. that it will be scheduled soon. And if it's not, we'll reach out to the chair again and see if that happens yes um so because uh, we can lobby the chairs and the members yep. of the committee to encourage them to bring it forward too can and do can and do yep uh so we'll certainly reach out if we don't see that soon but speaking of housing bills senate bill 406 is a, i think a really good common sense bipartisan bill um so let's move on to a partisan non-common sense not a good bill house bill 3501 this would yeah. be oregon's right to rest law and if folks have um have heard about the right to rest um essentially what it does is make camping on public property legal yes it does um it, it makes for all kinds of problems yeah so uh so you, we, i think it is worth pointing out that a small part of Multnomah County is your district. Yes, it is. So you have, certainly we're all, we're all affected by what happens in Portland. We can say that we're not, but we are. We all are. So what happens in, when these 
terrible situations in Portland of, of, of homelessness and safety and crime and drug use happen, they affect us. But they affect your, your constituents in Washington and Multnomah County probably more than anybody yes. else. So, I, and I hear a lot, especially from law enforcement people in Washington County, as to how this impacts them. Right. And uh, to Mayor, Mayor Wheeler's credit and the city council's credit, they have started doing sweeps again. So um, when you have a large camp in a park, um, they'll give notice, hey, you got a certain number of hours to get out or we're going to come in and we're going to kick you out and um, you'll take all your stuff. But if you don't take all your stuff, we're going to haul it away. Um, that would essentially make all of that illegal. The, the police would have no ability to stop right. this. If somebody putting up a tent on on the on the walkway on the sidewalk and wants to stay there permanently, they can. They can. They can. And it just boggles my mind why anyone would think this is a good idea. Well, I think that people should really go on OLIS and look at this bill up and then go to the little tab that says testimony. Right. That they should look at the testimony pro and con, and you will see that public opinion is not in favor of this. Yeah, it's great. You can actually see the testimony. It says the name of the person testifying, if they're representing somebody like a lobbyist will say who they're representing, but most people don't do that because they're individuals. And then it'll say, oppose, support, neutral. And it is, there's a lot of testimony, a lot of testimony. Um, you're going to be scrolling for a while. And it is almost, I would say, 98% of yes. They do, no one wants this bill. This is a No bad. one does. This is a, this is a step backwards into the dark ages let me tell you yeah it's my hope that this is just a courtesy uh it's a, there's a freshman representative who introduced the bill there's no one else on the bill there's no co-sponsors nobody at all. has co-sponsored that bill so you know there's political stuff that sometimes you want to encourage a new member and they've got a bill that they think is important so you give them a public hearing just as kind of a as a professional courtesy I'm hoping that's what that is. But for those people who are interested, uh, it is on May 4th at 8 a.m. Yes, 8 a.m. So yes, I that if down. you would like to testify, you can testify mm -hmm. either in person at the Capitol or you can testify remotely. And uh, So you can register uh, at, on OLIS and just look up HB 3501 and click the tab that says register to testify. And you can submit written um, testimony up to... I think you've got 24 hours after, 24 hours after. Yeah. yeah so you can submit written testimony um up to may 5th 8 a at 8 a.m if you're doing that encourage everybody to do that make it professional don't use profanity um don't be rude or mean just express your your yes. your feelings also don't just write i oppose this bill that's great. No one cares. It, give us reasons of why you're actually yeah. opposing the bill. Because uh, otherwise, and like, you oppose the bill, that's it's great. Your opinion's no more valid than somebody over here who says I support this bill. So, um, yeah, it is. It was uh, it, that bill has made national news, uh, which is uh, lovely. Well, well, yes, those things that are the the most egregious usually hit the um national news and call it makes us look we do that too much i just we, we, we've done that this session quite a bit and you know we're continuing to do it uh with a couple of other bills that we've got right so uh, uh, bring up yeah so one that we've gotten just a ton of um we've gotten a ton of uh, emails about, and we've heard a lot about, and I want to talk about a little bit in more in depth. We touched on it a little bit, and that's House Bill 2002. Um, this is, uh, this would do a lot of things. Um, 
But I want to bring up just a few things. Just want to point out a number of the things that it would do. Yes, and and I I know you've got a list. There, I do. I, I wish you would run through them. I um, will. Um, because I don't have my list handy, but yeah, I do have too. lists. But uh, I think that you know there are two ways that people are looking at this. There's the the people that have done in depth research as to what every word means, and then there are the people that are doing the research that are ignoring the consequences of what this is. And I think the probably the list that you have is the most complete list and the list that is the most compelling as to what this can do yeah so um trigger warning i will say there's some stuff in here that is disturbing um you know if disturbing stuff is um gonna bother you maybe uh Maybe go watch a baseball game or something. I that, because this is just disturbing stuff. But I, this is HB two thousand two. So the first thing, probably thing that people have heard about the most, is that it would allow for a child of any age without parental knowledge to receive an abortion. And I think it's important to talk more difference between percent parental knowledge and parental consent. In some states, um, a, a parent is required to know that their child is going to have an abortion, but isn't required to give their consent. So they just need to be be told about it. Uh, and in Oregon, mm, yes. parental, parental consent is required if for, for children under 15 to have an abortion. Uh, this would remove that. So um, there's a video going around of uh, of a it's the actual uh, testimony act, during yeah. the public hearing. Yeah, an actual testimony of one of the sponsors being asked, "Well, could could a ten year old get an abortion without their parents knowing?" And they said, "Well, yeah." And there was an audible gasp from one of the Democrats. Like, well, yeah, it's like, you know, you're sponsoring it, so know what's in it. So that's probably the biggest one. Another one, a doctor may not disclose to a child's parents information regarding the abortion unless they performed the uh, perform uh, uh, that they performed unless a child provides written consent. Yes. So um, not only are the, do they not have to tell the, the parents, they're actually forbidden from telling the parents unless the child gives written consent. Yes. Um, I, I think I said that last time. I've got to sign about 18 forms for my kid to get an aspirin. I know it. But... I know it. And, and our kids can't vote until they're 21. They can't buy cigarettes. Well, of course, they can't buy a gun. But all of these things that kids can't do. Right. But this bill is negating uh, the parents' rights. Well, it, it, it just and seems the... these things Go are ahead. dangerous, especially on children. Especially on children, these things are. These are. I mean, yes. if you're using medic, using chemical abortion, I mean, those are, um, those are, pretty intense pills that, you know, a, a parent is going to know what their what a child's, uh, medical history is, um. But if you just talk, drop them over at Planned Parenthood. I mean, yeah, they're, 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 that's not their regular doctor. And a duck kid is, you know, 10, 11, 12 year olds, they're scared. So, what are they going to do? They're going to do what scared kids do. They're going to lie. Right? Yes, exactly. It's, it is, yeah, it it's is unconscionable, unconscionable to me that for political reasons, because let's be honest, that's what this is. This is a political sellout to one side's big supporters. Yeah. Um, it, it, and, it, and children, are going to be physically damaged. And these are the same people who have advocated for so long for um, the fact that children are growing. Their brains are growing until they're 24, 25 years old. Right. So we're going to subject someone who is not fully developed mentally or physically to this sort of, this is, a, this is child abuse. Yeah. Well, 
There's another part of it I'm very sorry to say, because it isn't just about abortion. This would also allow a minor to receive uh, sex change treatments without parental knowledge. Yes. Um, you know, abortion is a terrible, awful thing that will especially, emo physically too, but emotionally affect a child uh, forever. But these, these sex change operations are irreversible. I mean, they will physically change right. them forever. And their parents, again, not only don't have to consent, but don't even have to know about it. See, and here's the other thing is the bill does not take care of the reversal. Okay, so someone decides they've made a mistake. Like the woman who testified who had had a double mastectomy and a hysterectomy and then realized that if she would have had counseling and support, she would have never done that. Right. And I think it's what given it. We're talking about children here. If I adults know. want to go have sex change operations, they're most welcome to do so. It's yes. their body. Uh, yes. None of any of us are saying you can't do that. But um, this woman was a child when right. she did this. Right. And, uh, yeah. And then, do it back and do it. If we're saying that our brains don't fully develop, and gosh, I remember when I was 15 years old, I, 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 I did things that oh, I can't I, even imagine. I, I would I, that I would. I mean, I was clearly not mature enough to make to do some of the make some of the decisions that uh, we're saying in this bill that children can make. Right. Um, and I wasn't special. I <laughs> think there are a lot of kids that were less. Oh, mature than everybody I had. does it. Uh, yeah. And um, are they probably a lot of kids that are more mature than I was. It was, just, it was probably middle of the road, but um, yeah. it's just uh, stunning to me. Yes. Um, so this bill will be coming. Um, oh, we're not done yet, Senator. We're not done. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought you had. Oh, I wish. Right. I wish. Um, this would also decriminalizing concealing the dead body of a newborn child. Um, Yes. Um, wow. Um, yeah. I, and I'm happy if anybody would like, to, if anybody is calling me out on things and you're making this up, I have a document uh, that if you go ahead and email us over or we're, I'm happy to send it over to you that has these claims and also cites in the bill where it changes. Where it is. So I'm um, happy to share that. I would also require Oregon taxpayers to be on the hook for abortions and sex changing treatments for non-Oregon residents. So um, you're over in Idaho or you're you're flying in from Montana or yeah. wherever, you can just come on over to Oregon and not only can you get it, but Oregon taxpayers will pay for it. Um, so that's probably, so, so that's the majority. There's more, but... That's the majority of the bill. Um, it really is grotesque. I, I I don't know what other word there is. There's no other word to describe it. And the fact that so many, and I, I wonder, you know, I've been in politics a long time, and I know that in caucus rooms, and I'm sure you know too, in caucus rooms, arms get twisted. Like we, yes. we You're going to vote for this. Um, the number, I think it was almost, I think it's every House Democrat has signed on, um, which is, uh, I know some of those guys like, personally. This, They're pro-choice, but they're not this. But are they this far from yeah. center? Well, personally, I don't know. But they're I mean, at the end of the day, personally, it doesn't matter. It's what you vote for and what you're supporting publicly. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, it just, I think it makes them seem very, very weak. Like, I know you don't, they don't all believe in this. I know. I, they can't. They, I mean, they're, some of them are monsters, but not all of them. But when you look at what they are, what they feel is coming out of that bill, they don't. They're not. They're being sold a bill of goods too. Yeah, but I wonder. And I, this is. I have no proof of this. It just is. I've been in enough situations around these sorts of things that I know what happens. 
how many of them are being told, hey, you're going to sign on to this bill or those, well, your three, bills are bills die. You, those three bills that you are, are insisting uh, that are super important to your district, they're not going to get heard. That happens. That happens more than we like to admit. Um, and I wonder, God, I'm, you know, I'm trying to give them the benefit of the doubt because that's the only way I can think that some of these people who I think are genuinely good, upstanding people would sign into something so um, utilitarian, eugenic, and disgusting. Yes. I mean, it, that's the only thing. Only thing I can can. And, and, and I'm not saying that's good or that's a that's a excuse. It's not. It's terrible. But it's better than actually believing in this stuff being a good idea. So it, it's very sad. So you'll be fighting this bill. <laughs> yes, I will be fighting this bill. Tooth uh, and nail. Yeah. And I'll also mention there's SJR 33, which uh, would enshrine, that would send this to the voters. It would, and constitutional. It, would enshrine it in the Constitution. And um, I, as is Adam's opinion, uh, I think that they realize that H, HB 2002 is unconstitutional. And so they're pushing this. H SJR 33 to, to remedy that. That's my tinfoil hat opinion. Well, I think your tinfoil hat opinion is right on yeah. because you, uh, you are not the only person that I have heard express this in discussions. Yeah. So I, you, I know, will be fighting this very strongly. Um, uh, you are in the minority, but uh, there's st there are things, there are ways. Um, when things are egregious, um, we won't get yes. into that, but um, yeah. Uh, there will be a lot of debate on this. In fact, I know that the House is most likely going to be spending a whole day debating this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it'll be interesting what people say. You know, what do they yeah. put on the record? Um, I'm, I'm hope they ask i hope yours i hope the the republican caucus asks questions because i'd love to hear the answers yes um really what do you guys what, what what are you intending on on this here um right. yeah what's the long game here what are you going to do right yeah well that was depressing what else you got uh, going on uh, anything next gonna, week nothing for bad on? news um Next week we start uh, floor on Friday. Yeah, you we haven't been doing that. Well, I've been doing four days a week. Yes. So now five. Now we're going to go five days a week. Right. So there's going to be a whole slew of new bills that are going to be released. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that means for those folks who um, I know we've been kind of using Fridays to have some of those in district meetings because you usually come home on Fridays or um, some extra things that you can do that probably not going to be doable anymore uh, with floor being on Fridays. So uh, keep that in mind, everyone. Um, we do have, uh, we have uh, Monday, we have the water caucus coming up. You know, we're talking about all of the water issues within the state and yeah. we've been having meetings once a month to discuss that. Um, so that should be very interesting because that's also a compelling topic. Um, and the water see. caucus is interesting because you've got people from Western Oregon that has too much and in the Eastern right. Oregon it doesn't have enough. Right. Um, we've got, I don't know, I, I have to tell you that every day is jam packed full. It is, it is. And I have meetings that are 15 minutes long, and uh, I have a lot of them when I don't have floor. Yeah, and you also have just because, um, just because lobbyists are called lobbyists, they sit in the lobby, um, they grab you and want to talk to you as you're going from one room to the other. So even when you are quote unquote got some downtime, you don't have any downtime. Um, I can't tell you the name of the couple, but I had a couple from Columbia County come and visit me um, this after one afternoon this last week that didn't have an appointment, mm -hmm. but they just came in and 
they just wanted to see what was going on in the capital and they wanted to see what i was doing and how things were going and they were just regular citizens but they had come to the capital to see what was going on and we had uh the nicest visit oh, good the other thing i was going to other visit i had not this week but last week that i didn't get to report was the ombudsman for um the elderly from Columbia County came and visited me, and I was able then to connect him with uh, a gentleman in Scapoose that was having um, some issues in uh, an assisted living um, facility um, that he needed some help with. And the other thing is we were able to get a, a nursing uh, license um, taken care of for a gentleman who's moving here from Kansas, if you can imagine, and was having a hard time getting um, his license. Um, and he worked successfully in lots of different places and had lots of uh, positive um, recommendations. Um, but because some of our systems and procedures in our state are so far behind, sometimes we have difficulties with um, getting people hired from other states because of how long it takes. Mm -hmm. Kind of interesting. Investigations take a long time. Hiring takes a long time. And, and each of our agencies are trying um, to rectify a lot of those things, but um, are having a difficult time. Um, We've also hired a new equity officer for the state. And so uh, um, a lot of that is because of the uh, number of complaints that have come in. And so uh, we have people that are taking care of those too. Yeah, there was a, um, a, long, uh, a long list of issues around the past equity officer. And, and now quite interesting, the situation around um, Secretary of State Fagan, that we're watching very closely. You know, um, yes. We didn't talk about that, but. Um, it, we will have to have a discussion about that because you that's know, a very... it's not going away. So I think um, that maybe that will be. Uh, I don't, and I, we're, we're running long already. So maybe this is a good conversation for us to have next time. Good uh, idea. But if you have not heard about what's going on with Secretary of State Shamia Fagan um, and her. Uh, recently uh discovered side jobs uh, <laughs> uh it is worth a, a quick google search um the uh, the folks over at willamette week have just done um just, oh, a, banger, just a banger job of it it really they've... really impressed uh, in their investigative journalism on that so check yes. that out the oregonian has a pretty good some pretty good articles about it too but um we'll chat about that next week how about that senator that's a great idea yeah Let's you know, we, never, else's we, are, we are never without things to talk about. I, there yeah. are. Never Thank you, Adam, for doing this. You bet. Thank you very much, but, Senator. It was so nice to see your kids at, at oh, the yes. beginning before we went on on uh, line. Yeah. Uh, it. They. They always. Uh. You know. Joy. Joy needed a, a volcano welcome. color sheet printed out, so we had to do that. And so, uh. Well, it's good to be back talking with you again. Yes. And um. We we'll shall. do it again next week. We'll do it again next week. What the heck? We had so much fun this time. Yes. All right, everyone. Thank All you right. very much, and have Thank a great you. week. Thank you.